is full of gold. So now the government and the corporates want that gold and they've come across an entrenched resistance. However, let's look at it the other way around. You know, that you have fo forest villages deep in the forest, take three, four, five days to walk to, to get there. That village is surrounded by sometimes 1,000 CRPF. People have been organized to resist them in very non-Gandhian ways. Because just as, no, just as this Maoist military strategy does not work outside the forest, the Narmada Bachao Andolan could not have been a Maoist movement because it didn't have cover. And also no army was coming into the villages to take over his land. The water was coming into people's villages. You can't shoot at the water, right? You can't blow it up. So it could not have been an armed movement. Similarly, inside Dandakaranya, you could not have had a, a movement where no one could, there was no audience. You know, Gandhian nonviolent resistance requires a kind of an audience in which, in front of which you perform. I don't mean that badly, I mean it very well. But you didn't have that. So there are people who make choices depending on the physical landscape where their struggles are from, where the, it depends on the history. You, I mean, I travel in Orissa and listen to these debates. People, it's not like some non-tribal Maoist Andhra ideologue goes to a village and waves a gun and everyone stands up and joins him, no. People have long debates about what kind of struggles they will wage. They are very wise about the decision. And as the pressure on them builds, they keep making different decisions. Is it your view, I'm asking both of you, is it your view that for this society, the only method of bringing about social and economic change is armed insurrection? Is, but is, it, is it your view that is that the only method left now? Or is that a second, second best method of bringing about social and economic changes? After all, for 100 years of history, you have, as you can, I don't understand why you are asking this question in such an aggressive way because I don't think I don't think I remotely remotely subscribe to the view that the only way of bringing about change is through armed resistance. I don't subscribe to that at all. However, I do believe that if you are a doctrinaire nonviolent thinker, there is a lot of violence in that too. I believe that. You know, I believe that there is the strength is in a biodiversity of resistance in which you actually think through these things without being dogmatic. You know, I really believe that. And because if you actually say, no, this is the only way, or no, this is the only way, you lose both ways. Even if you say the only way is nonviolent, you're, you're lost. You're completely a supporter of the middle class cause then. You know? So I think you have to think on your feet like a boxer in the ring. You have to land on your feet. You have to think fast, and you have to think always. But I don't believe that the only way is through armed struggle at all. Actually, I don't even think the Maoists believe that. Yeah. I think I agree with what Arundhati said, but I'd like to add one thing. You know, I don't believe in the, st the right of the state to monopolize means of violence. I am deeply skeptic. No, it's from this. My support for right of people to be armed is because I reject this notion of the state has a should or ought to have a monopoly over means of violence. It's only when the state, that's why I say, it has to be no to war against our people. When that is achieved, then and then only will I believe in the possibility of people being able to fight for, a, to, to transform the state and society peacefully. Otherwise, I believe that a combination of the two is very, very necessary because the state and the ruling classes are not going to give in. And to cite an example from a neighboring country where the Maoist having come so close to Caesar of power, they stuck 
a compromise and 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 they 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 forced all the 12 political parties to agree to an elected constituent assembly to to set up a new constitution and the kind of problems that they have encountered should also be something that we should take into account when we come out with a categoric rejection of of the usefulness or the need to also be armed i mean how many people stood up and preached non violence to the indian state about kashmir <laughs> speak i would i would love to speak and take up whatever you had to say and counter it i would really love to but it will take me at least half an hour to 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 uh, answer completely because i reject what you have said i think nepal's experience cannot be belittled in the way in which you are talking about the mao is the role of the naxalbari movement i think it's high time we 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 go back to it so i would request cpdr to organize a meeting where we can take up these issues Anand, that something. Yeah, uh, yeah. Basically, I completely share your uh, desire for the bauxite to remain in the mountain, and your apprehension that the Maoists will not necessarily guarantee that. I don't think that question has been raised among within the party or been discussed. Uh, I don't know what their current understanding of it is. Um, what worries me is that i don't believe that a few thousand people armed in the red corridor can bring the revolution in india um especially if it is not 